Automated peritoneal dialysis, or PD using the cycler. Gather supplies, solution bags, as per order. Total volume must equal the amount ordered plus an additional 500 cc to prime disposable set. It's okay to have extra fluid. The drain bag, the Y connection set, the four prong disposable set with cassette, four to five blue chucks, a four by four gauze, two betadine, plastic tape, face mask for patient and for yourself, and mini caps. Give report to the covering RN. Place a sign on the door, do not enter. Obtain patient weight, obtain vital signs, ensure that the air from the vents is shut off. If the patient is in a semi-private room, close the curtains. Ensure that all your supplies needed are at the bedside and ready for setup in the machine. Also make sure that you have your fluid warming for half an hour prior. At this time, perform the one minute hand wash and apply clean gloves. Turn on cycler using on or off button in the back. Ensure that the cycler is connected to a red outlet. The cycler will complete self-testing. The cycler will state, press go to start. During cycler setup, ensure that you have a second RM present to verify that the proper bags were selected and the program is correct according to doctor's orders. So from here, we're going to review our order. Currently it says press go to start. We're going to toggle down, hitting the down arrow to change program. From here we hit enter. We want our therapy to be CCPD, so that's accurate. We don't have to touch it. We can hit the down arrow again. Our total volume listed right here is eight liters. This is currently showing 10 liters, so we want to click enter and lower the total amount. So now eight liters. Once we have the accurate amount, we hit enter again just to verify that it's the proper um, amount. From here we go down, we're going to see therapy time. In this case, the therapy time is 10 hours. That is accurate, but if we had to change it, we just click enter and we can toggle again. If you can see, this goes in uh, increments of 10 right here. We're gonna go back to 10 and click enter. You're gonna click the down arrow each time you want to get to a different setting. The fill volume is two liters. Again, this is accurate. If we needed to change this, we would click the down and the up arrow here. Hit enter and down again. Last fill volume in this case again is accurate, which is zero. Again, same thing applies. You would click enter and up and down if necessary. The last one is going to ask for your weight. It first asks if you want it in pounds or kilograms. You want it in kilograms. We're gonna go down once more just to get to the actual weight portion. And this is where we're going to put the weight we obtained before we begin setting up the cycler. In this case, I'll say the patient weighs 90 kilograms. From here, Depending on if a patient had, in the middle of the day, what's called a midday exchange or not, what we want to do is we want to place an initial drain alarm. What this does is alert the machine that there's already previous fluid in the patient. From here, I want to click stop. It's going to automatically tell you what the cycles, the dwell time, um, and everything is within the machine. It does it itself. That is an automatic thing. The only thing that we put into this machine are the settings that are listed here on our order. We're then going to click down to make adjustments. This is where we'll find our initial drain alarm. If we knew the patient previously had a midday exchange of one liter, we would want to place this alarm to 1,000 milliliters or one liter. 
from here you can click stop again. At this point we have the therapy set up, we have our initial alarm in place, um, and we are ready to set up the machine. So at this point, um, on the press go to start, it's going to alarm us on everything we're supposed to do next. It will give us instructions. So if I click go, it will tell me to load the set. So this is now referring to our cassette that's located here. Everything we open, the garbage, we don't want to touch any of our clean supplies, so we place it on the floor. We will clean up after. At this point, we want to load the cassette into the machine. You're going to have these tubes facing upwards when you open it, otherwise it won't fit. Just like that, and you want to make sure this lever pulls all the way down. From here, I want to place our little um, lined tubing right here just to line up right onto our lever. And these are all the lines we're going to have to connect to our bags. At this point, I do want everything clamped. In walking through the lines, this top one here is connected to the patient. The blue line here is going to be if we had a last fill. These two in the middle are for our extra dialysate bags that go down below. Our red is hot, goes to the top bag, so it's the warmest one because it's connected to um, the hot part of the cycler machine. And this one will be our drain line. So this one is what the patient's going to drain out between each exchange. And the little one right here, if you notice, is connected again to our drain line. And if you needed to get any samples or cultures, this is where you would place our little mini effluent sample bag. From here, we also want to ensure in the room is all of our other bags. So we have this one warming here, which is three liters of 2.5%. Now remember, our total volume was eight liters. We do need excess to prime the line. So we will do nine liters in total. So we have two more three liter bags. From here, we also are going to need our drain bags. Two comes in one package. And again, we want everything clamped off. Be very mindful when you clamp these um, drain bags that the ones that are the biggest white ones here always remain clamped. If they do not remain clamped, you will end up flooding the floor. Just like our manual exchanges, we want the shiny side facing up. We also want to ensure all the lines don't touch the actual floor and we have a blue check in place. From here, we also want to use our Y connector because there's two drain bags and only one drain line. So we're gonna grab our manual drain Y connector right here. And this is very important when we go to connect that we pinky off the blue caps right here. We can keep it on our pinky just like this remove the lines, throw them, they don't matter to us anymore, and connect it just like this.
and ensure that this is on perfectly um, tight. Same thing applies to this one. Pinky, pull. From here we have our drain bags ready to go. At this point in time, we've loaded the set. If we click go again, it's going to perform a little bit of self-testing. At this point too, if we just wanna make sure that all of our lines are not tangled, we can check that as well. Any lines we do not use for the therapy, say there's no last fill, we can leave it clamped off. We never need to open that line. Mm -hmm. Now that our self-test is complete, it will tell us to open the clamps and connect the bags. We have all of our bags ready to go so we can begin connecting our lines. The one furthest to the right will be our drain line. Again, we're going to use the pinky technique. And connect them to our drain line. At this point, we are able to open up these bottom two clamps. However, you never again want to open these two white ones right here. In moving our way up, the red one right here will go to our top bag. Red is to hot. We again want to check our seal and ensure that the expiration date is appropriate on the bag, that when we squeeze, there's no areas of any leakage, that the fluid is clear, and then again, our order is correct in terms of the bag on top. When you're placing the bag on top, you want the highest dextrose to be the top bag. It's not the highest volume, but the highest dextrose excluding the last fill. The last fill, think of it as blue is the coldest line, if you did have one, would be the last thing to go into the patient. That is a cold bag, we don't need to really worry about it, but that one may be a higher dextrose. We would not place that one on the top solution. I'm going to take my next line here And with my pinky, pull this and my thumb and connect the line, ensuring I don't touch any of the actual connection piece. From this point, there will be a frangible right here. I do wanna do my north, south, east, west, around the world to then break the frangible. I can then also open the line. Our next is an additional white line right here. This will go to one of our lower bags. If you notice, these are wide connected. These can go to either bag, it does not matter. Ultimately, the fluid in these lines will be all combined. We want to check our seal on each bag as well, checking the expiration, clarity of the bag, ensuring nothing is broken on the lines, no frangibles are broken, doing our twists, make sure everything is good on that bag, and the same thing with the last one as well. When you're checking, you can squeeze the top and move it around to make sure there's no leakages in any of the bags. Like I said before, everything goes on the ground. We pick it all up at the end. Again, you're gonna grab both lines. Pinky with the loop. Thumb with this one. And you're going to, again, connect your line. 
north, south, east, west, around the world, and clamp. And then our last one. Pinky thumb. North, south, east, west, around the world, and unclamp. At this point, we want to ensure that every line that should be unclamped is unclamped and the rest are clamped. When I say that, we usually choose to do top bottom or bottom to top. I'm going to go bottom to top. So from the bottom, we have both of our drain lines open. We have the two additional larger white ones closed off. We never open them. We also have our sample bag closed off. We're not using it at this time. Our two bags below are open. We know we broke the frangibles. We're good on those and going upward. Our hot bag is open. We do not have a last fill in this case, so this is going to stay clamped. And lastly, our patient line, we're going to open. So we can prime this line all the way to the top. So now that we've ensured all the lines are connected, we can click go. Once this occurs, priming may take upwards of a few minutes. At this point, we're able to clean up all of our supplies on the floor, take off our gloves, and perform our three minute wash. While my lines are all priming, I want to get my connections ready and my betadine cross to connect the patient once the cycler is ready to go. So I'm going to take my four by four, open it up, Make sure not to tear or pull out the 4x4. Four four. Put it on my blue chuck. Open my betadine. Trying to hold the ends or the corners to keep this as clean as possible. Ensure I have my plastic tape readily available. In the case I were to accidentally drop or something may happen to the catheter, I do want to have mini caps readily available as well. I need my blue chucks to place underneath the patient. In this case, I have one ready to go right here. I'll pull my line and I am now ready to do my three minute hand wash. So now that I performed my three minute hand wash, I'm going to come back to the patient, make sure that they have their mask secured tightly onto their face above their nose, that I have on one as well. Again, that the vents are shut off if the door is closed and that the curtain is pulled if the patient is in a semi-private. These should all be things that are already done, but if anything happened between the time you had maybe washed your hands and came back to the patient, just ensure those things are additional safety measures and are done before connecting the patient. I'm going to put on my gloves, bring my betadine cross over to my patient, bring my plastic tape. At this point, my patient is easily accessible. I'm going to go over to the cycler, grab this top line, and make sure this is untangled as well. As you can see, the line is really not all that long. So overnight patients should really have a commode or something easily accessible at the bedside for toileting needs. Before connecting, I do want to clamp this off. I have everything ready to go. With both hands here, I'm going to pinky off the blue cap here. Take my mini cap off. Place my betadine cross around the tubing. You can touch the light blue, never the dark. Tape the line up. 
at this point I know the patient is still closed. I can kind of peek to tell. I can twist them open. You want to unclamp your patient line. And I may now begin therapy. As you notice, this says initial drain. This is when it's going to try to attempt to drain the patient. If there is no initial drain alarm, it will still attempt to drain. Other than that, I can lower the bed and I can walk out of the room as the patient does therapy overnight.